Now, Manodome is a pretty recently revealed Synchro archetype that was very impressive. It can make some very strong Synchro and boards, and it's not too bad at going second, being able to play through quite a few interruptions. However, at some pretty big issues, namely very poor comeback ability if its board's broken, and not being able to run too many out of archetype cards like hand traps. However, a just revealed Synchro monster, Bestial Despair, might be the last puzzle piece the deck needed to really become something special. As for the specifics of Bestial Despater, well, it is a level 10 Dragon Sinker that's dark attribute with 3500 attack and defense, and of summoning materials of 1 tuner and 1 non tuner dragon monsters. As for the effect, this first effect is that on your turn you can target one banished light or dark monster, special summit to your field. This even includes an opponent's banished monster, which is very strong. The next effect is that when your opponent activates a monster effect quick effect, you can target one banished card, shuffle it into the deck, then if you were that card's owner, destroy it, but if your opponent was the owner, negate the effect. A unique interruption effect that lets you either recycle your own resources, or, say, put an opponent's banished card back into the deck so they can't recover it. It's a very flexible and strong card that lets you extend and interrupt your opponent, as well as being a very good level for this deck. As for the Manado monsters, I already went much more in depth with them in another video, so you can watch that if you want to really see what their effects are, but to sum it up, it has two kinds, there are the tuner monsters, and then the non-tuners. The non-tuner is Ream Heart, who, when it's in the hand, can quick effect, destroy a Manado monster you control, and special summon itself, and when it is normal or special summoned, it searches a Manado card, then Manado Heroless, and Meek are the tuners. Now these can be special summoned when you control Vsauce or a monster with that stat line, and they each have the ability where when they are destroyed by a card effect, they summon another copy of themselves from the deck, and they also have another effect when they are destroyed by a battle or card effect. As for the spell traps, the deck has a field spell that searches any mana dome monster, as well as having the ability to revive a face up tuner you control when it's destroyed by a battle or card effect. Then we have mana dome obsession which allows you to destroy a monster you control to add either the field spell, or if you control the field spell, you can search any mana dome spell trap, then you can banish from the grave and special summon a Vsauce or a monster of that stat line from your hand. Then it also has mana dome imagining, a spell lets you reveal one mana dome monster or Vsauce or from the hand to draw two cards, then place one card from your hand on the bottom of the deck, then the graveyard effect to target a monster you control with the Vsauce stat line and turn it into a tuner until the end of the turn. Then it also has two trap cards, Mana Dome Break Heart that lets you special summon a tuner or synchro monster from your graveyard, and if it is a light monster, you can destroy one monster opponent controls with an equal or lower attack. Then it has a second effect, if a Vsa Star Frost or a monster with that stat line will be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. Then of course the archetypal counter trap, Mana Dome Reframing, which when a spell trap card or monster effect is activated while you control a synchro monster, negate the activation, then if you have Vsa Star Frost or a monster with that stat line in your graveyard or on your field, you can destroy that card. Then its second effect is so you can banish it from your graveyard, then target up to three mana dome monsters in your grave and shovel them to the deck. Very important fact for recycling your tuners. Another major engine I am playing this deck is the Scarecall engine. They're a small one, but it's very synergistic with the deck, as you play lots of Vsauce Star Frost cards, and the way the deck overall works works with both mana domes and bestials. Now I'm playing Scarecall Reichardt, which can summon itself to a main monster zone, adjacent to a Scarecall you control, and when it's summoned, it can search a Scarecall across spell chart from your deck to your hand, and then if you control three or more defense position monsters on the field, you can draw one card, which is shockingly easy to pull off in this deck. Then these spell traps, I am running one Scarecall Nova, which reborn a Scarecall monster or a Visa Starfrost, and then gives protection for Scarecall Link, the Scarecall field spell, which searches a Scarecall or Visa Starfrost, then, if three or more defense position monsters are on the field, you can target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. And then their trap card, Scarecrow Twin Saw, which allows you to tribute one Scarecrow monster, then target two cards your opponent controls, destroy them. And if you do, if you control Visa Star Frost, banish those destroyed cards instead of sending them to the grave. Then, if a link three or higher monsters on the field, you can banish this card from your graveyard, and for us this turn, neither player can activate the effects of link monsters on the field. As well as the extra deck monster, which I will go into later. The last of the major engines I am playing is the Bestial Engine, consisting of 3 Bestial Rebellion, 3 Bestial Magnumut, 3 Druid Swarm, and 1 Serenia, as well as Branded Beast and Branded Regained. Well, 
This is, of course, a very strong hand trap lineup, being able to interrupt your opponent, but it's also very good in this deck, specifically for extension, as these monsters' levels lap very nice for your big synchros, especially making Dispater. It also gives you plenty of comeback ability, something this deck very much struggles with. Normally, if you break a mana dome board, the deck's just gone, unless it draws a very specific set of cards. However, with the bestials, cards like Magnabut, Lubellion, and Brainer Regained all are very good for letting you kind of make a comeback and get into the grind game, something that is very important, especially in a format like this current one. The extra deck is where things get much more interesting for this deck. I am running three links, two XCs, and an insane amount 10 synchros, but that's because this deck never really summon locks itself, so you can use whatever extra deck cards you want as long as you can summon them correctly. As for the links, I'm running one Scarecrow Lightheart, as it lets you kind of go into Scarecrow Engine, search cards, and just generally helps you extend and make the deck more consistent. As well as I'm running Unicorn and Access Code to just make OTKs a little easier, and Unicorn and Access Code are also pretty nice for making Twin Saw's second effect live. Then I'm running Wallow, as this deck has plenty of ways to make level 6s through the Bestials or your two level 6 Synchros, and Wallow is a very good card especially because it can allow you to then go into Zeus, a very good equalizer, especially once again if you need to make a comeback after your board is broken. As for the Synchro Monsters, I am running two level 6s, Star's Charge Warrior, and Coral Dragon. Their main effects are pretty nice, but the main thing is that they are good for Synchro Laddering, and they draw you cards. A Charge Warrior drawing you a card and summon, and Coral when it's used as material or sent to the grave. And these are very easy to summon, you have plenty of level 4s, and level 2 tuners is all the deck really has. Then I'm running three level 8 synchros, Cypher and Lord Omega as it's the most generically good one, and just a solid card, Adamant's Pater Risen Dragite as it's a spell trap negate when you have a water in the grave, very easy to do when you have Meek in the deck, and then Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, quite easy to make with cards like Coral of Charge Rare, or, which I'll explain later, Ultimize Zulkin, and it's just a very strong card being able to negate monster effects and beat over high level monsters. Then for the level 10s, I am also running three, but on the floor as it's just very strong, very flexible. Then Mana Dome Prime Heart, as this is the archetypal level 10 synchro, which is excellent for ripping apart boards and finishing out games very quickly, being able to attack multiple times with good protection and floating ability. Then, as I said before, Dispater, very strong card, not too hard to summon, and lets you extend much further. Then for my level 12 synchros, I'm running Super Heavy Samurai Overworld Master Owl. This is a never recently revealed card that's also still only in the OCG, but it's a very strong level 12 synchro that's completely generic. As for its effect, it can attack while it's in face-up defense position, applying defense for damage calculation, which is 4,000 defense. You can ignore the protection effect because you're not running over Super Heavy Samurais, but the real important effect is that once per turn, if your opponent activates a spell trap card or effect, you can draw until you have three cards in your hand. For a deck that has a habit of dumping its whole hand on the field of grave, this is a very good ability, letting you draw into extra cards, especially if you draw into something like Bestials. Then I'm also running Ultimize Zolgan as an effective level 12 synchro, as that's the main way you'll be summoning it. And there's plenty of ways to search spell traps a set to go ahead and summon Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. It also has additional synergy as cards like Branded Beast contribute over it, or Bissed Labellion, to extend or get more interruptions once you've already used up Zolgan. Well, what can the deck actually do in practice? Well, here's a test hand that will go for you a pretty decent idea of what the deck can make in terms of end boards and how it works. Now this hand consists of Bestial Rebellion, Mandome Reframing, Primal Planet Galarium, Mandome Breakheart, and Mandome Harless. To start off, I will use Lebellion's effect to search for my deck a Bestial, in this case Magnumut. Then I will activate the field spell, searching a never Mandome in this case, Reimheart. Then I will go ahead and normal summon Harless and target a Reimheart to destroy it. Then in sequence I will go ahead and activate Reimheart, then Harless, then Calarium. After this chain resolves, I will control two Harless and have an extra mana dome in my hand. In this case, I will search Meek as the last tuner. Then I'll go ahead and synchro these two off for Charge Warrior. Afterwards, I'll go ahead and draw a card. In this case, drawing Visa Starfrost. I will summon Starfrost, use Harless's effect to summon the last copy from my deck. Then I will go ahead and summon Meek from my hand as I now control Starfrost. I will link off Starfrost for Lightheart to search the field spell. Then, after I get the field spell, I will go ahead and activate it to search a Scaraclaw monster from my deck to my hand, in this case Rykart. Then, I will go ahead and summon Rykart from my hand, searching a Scaraclaw spell trap, and then drawing an extra card, in this case Serenir. 
Afterwards, I synchro these two off for Coral Dragon. Then, I will synchro these two off for Zulkin. You synchro Coral Dragon, I will draw an extra card. I will set a spell trap, in this case, Mana Dome Reframing, to summon from my extra deck to the field, Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Then, I will tribute off Zulkin for Bistu Lobelion. Using Lobelion, I will activate from my deck, Branded Beast. This will be important later. And right now, I summon Serenium. And this is why I activate Beast from my deck. Because I can go ahead and sink or summon Dispater using Lubellion and Meek. Then I'll activate Scarecrow Rival and send my grave to the field, Beast of Starfrost. I will sink these two off for Masarau. And then using Serenator Effect, I'll dump from my deck to the grave, rebranded. Then I will activate Magnum's Effect to banish Beast of Starfrost and summon itself, Cherubin's Effect. Then I will use the Spader Effect to summon Fisa Starfrost that is banished. Using these two, I will overlay into Wallow. Then I will go ahead and set Breakheart. Then in the end phase, both search Magnumut, or use its effect to grab Drus Worm. Then activate Branded Beast Effect to activate Branded Regained to my field. So, what does this end board do? Well, it is very strong as you can probably tell. I have the Interruption Effect of Branded Beast to destroy a card on the field. I have Druid Swarm to banish a card in the grave to summon itself, and in Tandem of Beast, that's an extra interruption. I have Dispater's Effect that allows me to either negate an effect or destroy a card. I have Reframing, which gives me an Omni Negate. Break Heart allows me to reborn a monster that can also destroy a card in my opponent control, so if I special summon a Light Monster. Wallow allows me to interrupt a card in the opponent's graveyard. Crystal Wing is a Monster Negate. And Masurao allows me to draw cards from my opponent activates a spell trap effect. As well, Rebranded also lets me special summon uh, Bestials and draw cards. It's a very strong end board that's hard to crack through, that also gets me plenty of cards in my hand for the following turn in case this board does get broken. And if it doesn't, well, a follow up lethal is not going to be very hard. I have very easy access to something like ask Access Code, and cards like Crystal Wing, Synchro Dragon, and Masurao can get huge attack stats. So in conclusion, Dispater makes your deck much stronger, allows it to extend a ton, makes including the Bistials feel a lot better, giving you more hand trap space, and it's very good interruption on the opponent's turn. As well, it lets you save some level 10 synchros like Baron Flora for follow-up turns, which makes their comeback ability even stronger. And in general, the deck is very powerful. The main domes let you make huge synchro boards. The Scary Claws are a very good backbone for that, and the deck can play through a shocking amount of interruptions. And the deck has just enough space to run some powerful blowouts in the side deck to really laser target on the deck's weaknesses. In general, I think this deck will be a very strong contender when it hits the TCG, being able to maybe even hit tiered status. And, provided the second wave of support for Mana Domes is even decent, I think this deck might really become something, maybe even a true challenger for decks like Sprite's Throne. And that's all for now. Thank you for watching, and feel free to leave any feedback you have in the comments, and subscribe if you want to see more in the future.